And welcome to the castle, everybody. This is Nightsaber Z42. And this video is going to be a little bit different than videos that I actually put on this channel. Um, ever since quarantine started, I've decided to go ahead and take up a new hobby. Um, and that is tabletop roleplaying. Well, I've always done tabletop roleplaying, but I haven't been able to go and see my regular groups in person. So I've taken up virtual tabletop role-playing, specifically Star Wars the FFG line. And so this is going to be a quick tutorial on how to start your own game and some of the mechanics of how to run it, some tips and tricks, as well as what the character sheet does and how to get it all set up. So if you're looking for a tutorial on how to utilize um, Star Wars FFG, whether it's Force and Destiny, Age of Rebellion or the Edge of the Empire, then this is where you want to be. And I just realized that my camera is on. Um, ah, okay. So, first and foremost, you're going to need a pro subscription on Roll20. The reason you need that is because the character sheet that we're going to be using will utilize the API for dice rolling. If you don't have access to the API, then you're not going to be rolling dice from the character sheet. Now, there are some workarounds, but not in Roll20 that I can show you a little bit later. But for now, we're going to do it just as if you had a actual pro subscription. So um, I'm going to go ahead and create a new game here. Any day now. There we go. And I am going to assume that you know the basics of Roll20. And I'm not going to explain um, any of the mechanics for the actual Star Wars game. If you would like to learn more about the mechanics and stuff like that, my recommendation would be to go and look up Steve is Board's YouTube channel. He's got some great videos on how to play and some fun builds that you can try out as well. So once you're in the Start a New Game page, you're going to choose a character sheet. Just go ahead and type Star Wars, and you're going to see the D20 system D6, the 5th edition D&D Star Wars, but you're going to also see the FFG line right here, and you're going to want to click on API compatible. If you click on simple, it's going to look very different, and you're not going to be rolling dice inside. Um, so we're going to click on API compatible. It's going to look like this. Now, if you need to read up on the manual, the manual page, the wiki page is right down below. Although a fair bit of warning, it is kind of dry in my opinion. It just lists functions. It doesn't really list how to do it. So, I mean, take it with a grain of salt. You can read through it if you would like, but um, that's what this video is for. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the game now, if you are wanting to use the dice and you have the pro subscription, you're ready to set up your API. So you're going to go to settings and API scripts. This is very important. So I have the script library right here. I'm going to go ahead and click that. And I will also type in Star Wars. And there's two uh, API scripts that we need. First one is Destiny Tracker. So this basically makes it so that your players, you can prompt Destiny um, to update the Destiny pool um, as a GM. And it'll also let your players actually roll for Destiny. So we'll go ahead and add that. And then we got to start all over again. So type in Star Wars and you can see the dice roller, which is what we want. This actually allows us to roll the custom FFG line dice in through the actual character sheet itself. So we'll add that script as well. Okay, once you have both of those scripts, don't mess with anything. You don't want to break it. You don't want your game to somehow get damaged. Then you have to start all over again. Okay, so let's go to our test game. We'll go ahead and launch it. And you're going to see a white grid screen. Now, I do use maps quite a bit. Um, so one of the first things that I do, I actually uh, click enable off. Because every movement and range bands in Star Wars is abstract. 
So you're not really counting or measuring um, feet. Although sometimes I will do that if I want to if I want to specify if my characters are at short range or long range. So I might do that, but I don't want it to snap to the grid because that's very limiting. Um, also, my uh, camera is not going on this, but if you find that your camera always starts up, just go to settings up here on the top right, scroll down until you see I want to broadcast and I want to receive and click those to nothing because you're probably going to be using Discord for voice anyway and you don't want your bandwidth being taken up by your webcam and whatnot. And I also so go over here to player video avatar size and I click names only. That way you have more space to look at for your maps and stuff. And don't forget to click on reconnect to make sure that this broadcast and receive goes through or it updates. If you don't click on it, it's just gonna keep on broadcasting. So here we are, we have our characters, we have handouts. I'm actually gonna go ahead and delete that real quick. So the only character that you have is the dice pool. Now, dice pool is really good and it's only accessible to the GM. So when you see it, you go to character sheet and you've got this little tidbit of the character sheet. This is what you use for your dark side uh, to roll your destiny pool, to uh, force the players to update it and to use dark side points basically. Um, there's also different things like details on your campaign or the player group, whether they have a base of operations or shared resources and the settings. So something that I've been trying out with my, my groups, um, I actually use the display in skill and I also will click yes and yes. Fear check, um, we'll leave that as no. And what this means is when your players roll for a skill, if they roll advantages or threats, there will actually be suggestions down here next to the, uh, on the results on what you could use those for. Or if there's any extra successes, it'll also kind of show you what you can use that for as well. So with that being said, I'm actually going to start right here in the journal and we're going to create a new character. Okay, uh, that looks good. If you're a player looking to create a character, then your GM will already set this out for you and have it set to probably everybody's journal and also to be edited by that specific person. In a sense, I'm the only one here. It'll just be there. Uh, you could click and upload an avatar. Um, tokens, kind of the basic roll 20 thing so I'm gonna skip that until it's relevant but we'll go ahead and click save changes and we'll go to the character sheet and this is our character sheet and the first thing I will tell you about this character sheet it looks very daunting but do not worry there's really only a couple of things that as a player you're gonna be looking at there are five tabs at the very top okay character sheet vehicle sheet group sheet companion sheet NPC sheet as a player you're going to be sticking to character sheet most of the time. Now, let's say that you have a Starcraft or like you're going to be rolling like to you're going to be rolling a vehicle mounted a uh, turret or something. You'll go to care. You'll go to the vehicle sheet and it's either going to be in Starship, Planetary, or if you're riding a beast that and it'll have the details from for your vehicle, just like it is in the book. And you can actually roll right there. Um, I'll probably do a separate video on this page specifically because there's all sorts of cool things that you can really do. The group sheet is just for like if you have a rebel base or a business or a homestead just to keep track of stuff like that. Same thing if you have a companion. NPCs sheet is really only good for the GM and I will kind of do that in a separate video. So the character sheet has six different tabs to go with it, and it's right underneath your stats. So I have character info, skills, combat, item inventory, critical injuries, and any notes that I want to take. You're probably going to be sticking around skills and combat for a majority of your game. 
unless you're called to roll for a critical injury or you get some items and stuff like that. So the character info is going to have everything that is required of your character, like species, the name, how much XP you've accrued over time and how much is available, as well as your career and specialization. Um, this is basically just background story stuff until you get down here to the actual mechanics. So if you're running Edge of the Empire, you're most likely going to be using Obligation. If you're using Age of Rebellion, you're going to be using Duty. And if you're using Force and Destiny, you're going to be using Morality. Although you can mix and match depending on your GM's um, story, basically, or campaign. So if I go over here to Obligation, um, I can click on Obligation. I can do the type is going to be um, maybe like depth. Uh, I can select the magnitude as being five, and then I can go ahead and describe it. You owe a depth to the Pike Syndicate, which is actually what some of my players have. Okay, it is also the same for the duty. It's a little bit different for morality, but it's also self-explanatory if you kind of go through it in character creation in the core rule book itself. Um, so that is pretty much all there is for the character info. Um, I mean, as things come up, as you add obligation or duty, um, you'll come back to this page and you'll add it. You can even delete some by clicking modify and the trash can and there you go skills so you have your characteristics up here so if you're creating a uh, an alien species or a human it'll list their starting characteristics and of course during character creation you can upgrade those characteristics by spending xp i'm not going to get into that you can go look up another video on that but the one thing that i will say though is that every if you upgrade your characteristics it'll actually go ahead and upgrade your um, the dice that you're rolling for certain skills or skills for that characteristics in real time the only caveat to that is you do need to click out of that for it to register so at willpower is at three but i'm not rolling three green dice it's at one for now if i click out boom it updates so if you're ever trying to update something, whether it's you're rolling purple dice or anything like that, um, you need to click out of it for it to register and add it there. So I'm just gonna go ahead and click three on all of that. And it has all of your core skills from astrogation all the way down to your knowledge skills. If your GM adds skills, you can definitely add some skills do it for whichever characteristics if it's career or not and your rank in that so let's say that i am playing or i'm doing my character creation and i'm looking at my uh, career skills i'm going to click on the career that way i know that those specific skills um, aren't only require the standard five times the rank that you're going to so if I'm going to rank one, it's just going to cost five experience. If I go to rank two, it's going to cost 10 experience plus the five that I spent before that. So um, if it's not a career skill, then don't put check the career. And that way I know that I'm supposed to spend five extra XP to upgrade that skill. And of course, after you click off of it, it will update in real time. Um, just remember, you can only have a maximum of two per rank or two ranks per skill if you're at character creation but it can go up to six after um after after character creation so there i have two yellows and one green for astrogation so let's say that my gm says that i need to make an astrogation check and it's going to be a hard check or a three purple check as i like to do it with my players i can do i can put in the input the purple in one of two ways i could input the purple here in the dice pool but you do need to remember to reset it after every check or else this purple is going to be persistent. So once I upgrade that, I'm going to click out so it registers and I'm going to go to astrogation and I'm going to click on the D20 dice button. Bop. And there we go. The cool thing about this, as I said, because we have certain settings turned on in the dice pool 
it'll actually um, have some suggestions on how we can spend this threat. And if you hover your mouse over the actual pictures, it'll tell you what the uh, symbols are. So if you're just learning about the dice and what the different symbols mean, don't worry about it. This program's got you, dog. Okay? So some cool little nifty things. The second way that I can do it, I'm going to go ahead and click on the uh, reset button here to bring it all back down to zero. Other thing that I can do, like let's say that I have a talent or I have some sort of condition where I have to add a black die to all roles for that specific skill. So if I go to modifiers and I hover over this question mark, um, you can see all of the different uh, um, letters mean different colors. So if I'm using black, then I'm gonna put in one BLK. And you do need to have the number before this, the letter. And the letter does need to be um, in lowercase. If it's in uppercase, it's not gonna work. Okay, make sure it's lowercase. So let's say that all of my astrogation checks because of a certain condition are going to be black from now on. I can put black here. If I am rolling dice, I could also put the two purple here, or I guess for the example, it was three purple and roll that. And boom, you got your black and three purple. And man, I wasted a really good roll with that triumph on this one. Or I can mix. So I know that this is bl this one black die is always going to be persistent. And I can just come up here and do the three and go ahead and roll. Whoops, wrong one. I need to roll the actual check. There you go. And it'll add the three purple dice. Wow, my second triumph. What is going on? Man, if only I rolled that well. So there you go. And of course, it'll tell you all of the different things that you can spend that triumph on. But of course, you can always do other things. These are just suggestions, so to speak. So that's characteristics. Um, that's pretty straightforward right there. If you are a using a lightsaber, if you're if you have one of the different styles like Makashi style, I think is one, then you can change the actual um, characteristic that it uses. So like agility. Um, and it'll actually take it off of your agility characteristic there. So for combat, let's say that my GM says that I need to roll for initiative. or So he's going to click on the turn order and that's going to show up for everybody. And he's either going to say it's cool because it's prepared or it's vigilance because it's unexpected. Um, they, don't, they don't hardly ever have modifiers. But I'm sure you could add black dice or blue dice to that. So you could do that here or up here, which let me reset. And so they tell me that I have to make a uh, cool check. So bop, and in the turn order, it automatically adds it. And without looking, I can already tell that I got one success and two advantages. Correct. So after that, if you're the GM, click on the uh, settings icon and go ahead and click on descending. So if I do that again, there we go, some different results. Um, click on the settings and go to descending. And now it has it from the highest order all the way down to the lowest. So I have one PC that's gonna go first and then one that's gonna go next and the next one. Um, when we get into NPCs, um, I'll go ahead and show you how it's gonna change a little bit. But for now, um, go ahead and remove all the turns. So I should have some weapons, correct? So if I need to add a weapon, I'm gonna go ahead and add weapon. And I'm going to have a small holdout blaster. And yes, I do have this memorized because I have inputted a lot of adversaries and NPCs in. And it's going to be a uh, range light. You can do weapon type or any modifiers. So if I am if I have a persistent blue die in there, I can put that there. Or I can put the book that it is. Um, it does have a feature. It's got stun setting. So... I can switch it over from lethal to non-lethal. Um, the quality would be like, it, or the condition would be if it's new, minor, moderate, or major damage. So it's brand new. And so once I have this, um, if I'm asked to make a roll, such as a um, medium, or sorry, such as a short attack, because this can only really effectively go at short, I can come up here and click on the one purple, 
or I can go into modifiers and put in 1P, whichever one is easiest for you. I'm probably gonna start doing this up here just so I have a little bit more control. I can always see it. And then you're gonna click on the D20 and it will roll. And I am only left with one advantage. Um, you can see that it that the failures canceled the success, successes out and one advantage is canceled out by the threat. So I'm left with one um, advantage. And for some reason, it doesn't really tell you what you can use your advantages for, even though we have that setting checked off. So I think that might either be a feature that's missing or something like that. But yeah, there you go. And as long as you have this information filled out, it will tell you how much damage it does base and how many advantages you need for a critical hit, as well as the range and any qualities that you have, which I guess should be, I just realized stun setting should be right in the qualities, right? Yeah, okay. I've always been putting it in the wrong spot. So the only thing it will not do, so let's look at this uh, result up here. It'll tell you the base damage, but it won't tell you how many, how much damage you're actually doing. Because remember, after your first success, you add one damage. So basically the formula is take however many successes you have and subtract one from it, and that's how much damage you do from your base. So I have five, six, seven, eight, and your GM will subtract that from their soak. And we already know this because we're like masters of the core rule book. Just kidding. So there you go. That is weapons and item inventory. So if you have armor, you can add that there. Um, it'll have the how much soak it adds, how much defense it adds. Although you might have to really specify um, what kind of defense, whether it's range defense or melee defense. Um, encumbrance, hard points, if there's any of that. If you have any cybernetics, that goes there. Tools or other personal gear. Um, critical injuries, if you are asked or if a, an enemy makes a critical hit on you, you roll on the critical injuries. The cool thing about this is all you need to do is click on roll critical and it will add it and it'll even tell you what it does. So I am bowled over. I can't, as a player, I cannot um, mess with this. It's persistent until it gets healed and it'll tell you how much um, of a check for medicine it is to actually heal that. So it'll take two purple to actually heal that if somebody else is doing a medicine check on you. Um, if you're performing medicine on yourself, I believe it gets upgraded. So you have, I have the bold over um, critical injury. So I'm not prone and suffer one strength. So if I heal it, I can click heal and it goes away. But let's say that I let it persist and I get another critical injury. Well, as in the core rule book, it says that I'm supposed to add 10 to the check uh, if it's just a standard critical injury. And it does keep track of that. It says previous criticals, zero out of 10. So if I click roll critical, it changes to one. So it sees the dice roll is 62, but it adds 10, so it becomes 72. Now I am hamstrung. So if I add another one, there we go, it's adding 20. So it keeps on going until you heal it. Um, you could obviously um, go ahead and click the effect off if you've already suffered that effect. So some of these critical injuries are one-time effects only. Even though they're one time effect only, they still persist. You will still have to heal them in order to get rid, excuse me, to get rid of the um, previous critical um, and get that back down. So if I heal it all the way, I'm rolling back down to zero. Ooh, ouch, 99 out of 100. So there you go. Um, you can add notes here and that will kind of stay as well. So if you ha are in a campaign and you are doing like a heist and you're trying to, you know, decide how you're going to go about it, you can keep track of notes there. That could be a little hint for my players that might be watching. Um, and I never did get to go over your stats. So let's say that I have 10 wounds, I have four soak, I got 12 strain or something like that. 
These are dependent on your um, species that you're playing as. If I have any range defense or melee defense that goes there, or if I have any encumbrance. If I'm a uh, force user, I can put in my threshold. Um, if you are committing any dice for your force powers, then you can click that there. The cool thing is though, is that um, I have, I can keep track of my current away from my threshold. So don't use the threshold, that's your maximum wounds. Use the current to keep track of any wounds that you accrue. Same thing with strain, okay? And that is kind of it. Um, let's say that the GM wants to have me roll for my destiny pool. He will click on force player update. Uh, it needs to be reset. Okay, this does happen. To fix this functionality, go to the dice pool, character sheet, and add one dark side, one light side point, then click on the force player. Okay. So this sometimes works, this sometimes doesn't. One and one, um, force player update. And let's see if that worked. Okay, updating destiny pool. Cool. Clear, force update. And so um, we're updating the player destiny pool or we're gonna click roll destiny and it will automatically add the results to the destiny pool. And then if for some reason you come in and you just create a new character and there's already an established destiny pool, you're gonna click sync pool with GM and that will automatically sync it to whatever the GM has. So if I want to use a light side point, just click on use light side and it'll automatically convert it to a dark side point for the GM to use. And the only thing is it will only update here. You're going to have to actually decide how or what happens when you pop that destiny point. So if you're upgrading a skill, you can go up here to the dice pool and click upgrade. And then whichever skill that you're using, maybe it's, um, maybe it's a leadership check, um, it will actually turn one of these greens into a yellow. See, just like that. Plus the one purple that I have right there that I forgot about. So there you go. So that, as a player, that's kind of all that you really need to know. Um, in a separate video, I will go over um, GM stuff. I'll go over the rest of these, um, or at least the vehicle sheet tab. And in the next video, I will actually focus on what the GM does behind the scenes and creating adversaries and all of that. So thank you guys for tuning into this. Um, this might seem like a lot, but as you play, it does get easier. Even as a GM, it does get easier and it's actually really, really fun. So thank you guys so much for watching. Go ahead and leave that thumbs up to help support this video and get it out there to those that really need it. This is just some information to help you guys out. And I'll see you guys in the next video.